Welcome to episode 72 of the Canadian Prepper Podcast, recorded June 14th, 2020. My name is Ian, and I live on Vancouver Island. I'm an outdoor enthusiast, sports shooter, my farm's designated handyman. I'm Alan. I'm a safety trainer, first responder, security expert, overall safety nerd, and I just wanted to say happy 243rd birthday to the U.S. Army today. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yep. It was also the 241st um, anniversary, birthday of the American flag. Oh. So was this like Lexington, like or uh, was it Concord or whatever it was the opening shots? Uh, Concord, yes. Yes. Okay. Well, there you go. Yep. There you go. I had no idea. Um, <laughs> okay. Want to help support the show and keep Canadian Pepper Podcast on the air? Buy a Canadian Pepper Podcast T-shirt at RapidSurvival.com. All proceeds help keep the lights on and the backup generator fueled. And if you are enjoying the show, please take a few minutes, like us on Facebook, and submit a review on iTunes. We also want your feedback, good, bad, or indifferent, even if it's just a topic you want us to cover. You can email us at feedback at prepperpodcast.ca. All right, Eric's not here to do the uh, dad joke, so we have some containerized content for you this episode. We're going to start off with some preparedness-related news. Next, we'll let you know what we did for some preparedness since our last episode. Then we'll get into the main topic, which is compact 72-hour kits. Um, I put one article in here tonight. The, um, the 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 people of Yemen are having a bit of an issue um, with a with a civil war, and it seems that the Saudis are funding one side and the Iranians are fun- funding another the other side, and somebody's the government and somebody's the rebels and somebody's causing discourse for their own gain, and that may or may not seem to strike a chord with things that are happening stateside. And I say one man's uh, terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. So, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's uh, just like Vietnam. You know, they got war by proxies and everything else. It's something we should probably exactly. tackle at some point, right? Yep. All right. So for myself, uh, so it turns out they did send some viruses to China after all. So if you remember back in last July, uh, before the COVID thing hit, of course, there was a Chinese scientist unceremoniously booted from the Winnipeg Level 4 Biosecurity Lab. And they were all like, don't worry, administrative procedure only. Don't get conspiracy theory on us. It's not. It's nothing serious. And uh, yeah, they lied. So <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> no, no kidding. So uh, yeah, it turns out the the documents have come to light now that indeed the the scientist in question, along with her husband and a couple of her students, uh, sent Ebola. Uh, I think uh, like hepatitis or some other virus, but it starts with an H, anyways. And a couple other choice little samples over to the Wuhan Biosecurity Lab. I wonder so. if any of them were coronaviruses. Yeah, I wonder. And of course, so like, uh, yeah, I guess this one's uh, leaning more towards conspiracy fact at this point. So uh, there's a couple articles out there, but uh, they're still referring to her as a Canadian scientist on CBC, but only because she was working in Canada when she was doing this. Not that she's Canadian national, because you don't want to offend certain countries, I guess, right? She was a scientist for Canada when it happened. Well, it's a stretch, but I mean, what what does the CBC do if they don't stretch? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, other than that, it was uh, Hale Mageddon in Calgary yesterday. So, I put a news article in there on the, another one from Pravda, the CBC, uh, about the uh, hailstorm that was flooding Calgary yesterday. Did you see any pictures from that? Uh, I didn't. Um, I was. I've been a little busy. I, I didn't put it in, my, in the news, but there was a tornado touchdown about uh, two and a half miles from my house um, Wednesday night. So that kind of um, those are the pictures I was focusing on. Okay. Yeah. So normally, of course, Calgary is pretty much an arid city, right? Like it's you know brown yeah. all but for three weeks of the year, theoretically. And uh, <laughs> this time they had uh, like enough hail come down in such a short term. They actually had rivers of hail going down. And the traveling prepper sent me a video as well, and it actually showed like. Like literally, rivers of hail meeting up on the sidewalk and going by his house. Like the uh, the main highway north south, the number two or Queen Elizabeth Way was completely shut down. Uh, it had like feet of water on it, and uh, there was like siding removed. Cars, like the windshields, got like they were bigger than golf ball size. Actually, they're like egg sized oh, wow. hail going through everything. And so they figure is in the hundreds of millions of dollars of damage just in the space of like fifteen minutes. Wow. So, question: If two rivers of hail meet at an intersection, who gets the right away? I don't. I guess the first on the, the one on the right. I don't know, but yeah, it was very interesting because it was just like a like a fast moving glacier. You could just see it, right? It was just, uh, yeah, pretty amazing. That, that would probably be really disturbing to be in. So, uh, if there's any listeners out there that that were there, I'd love to hear. Uh, we'd love to hear what happened and your experience with it. Well, yeah, not just uh, their experience, but like uh, what they did to deal with it. Because I mean, I'm sure there's some roofs damaged. There is some flooding issues in basements and everything else. It'd be interesting to see what kind of the, the personal experience they had it was. 
Yeah, so that's yeah. So if you're if you're in the Hamilton area, then uh, let us know. Or Hamilton, wow, uh, Calgary area. They're basically the same place, right? Um, let us know. See, uh, we'd love to we'd love to see see and hear and talk about what happened. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's move on to what we've done lately for preps. So for myself, since Eric decided to uh, show disdain for the listeners and not show up, uh, see here, as for myself, I met up with the listener, uh, Steve, and uh, he's the one that helped me get set up with the ham radio examiner. And so we got to talk a little bit of ham radio over a cup of coffee, and uh, he brought out one of his drones over. So I got to see my ideal drone in action, which is a little Mavic Mini. Um, yeah, we had a good exchange of ideas. It's nice to have a, a like-minded guy close by, so that, uh, that's good. Hopefully, we'll see more of him. And let's see here. I did some more, more wood processing, just basically like clearing underbrush, working on that fire break I've been working on. I, I'm down to the last quarter, but it's it's really thick jungle. So, um, And I got a couple giant fir trees to get rid of, too. But, yeah, I'm working have, on it. Have a chainsaw. We'll travel. Yeah, it's it's amazing how you can do like five minutes worth of chainsaw and then have to deal with the cleanup for the next three or four days because some of these trees are so massive, right? Uh, absolutely. Um, so my quad, I fixed that one again because I'd worked on the, uh, the carburetor and a couple of things with the, uh, the, uh, island mentor there. And unfortunately, I think I had actually left the fuel line a little loose. And so it drained out an entire tank of gas onto my ground, which really sucks. And so anyways, I had to like tear everything off again, get into the, the carburetor, which is like underneath the seat and hard to reach. And I had to figure out what the problem was when I'm pretty sure it's the fuel supply line. So anyway, that's back online. Uh, see here at work. Unfortunately, I had to work for most of the days between this episode and the last, so boo. Um, and basically, yeah, other than that, I pretty much take a, a bit of a hiatus from prepping just for the last, uh, or next couple of weeks anyways, because we're still trying to primp the house, get ready for a sale, maybe a uh, possible relocation, we'll see. Uh, uh, all depends on what, how everybody else reacts to this COVID thing economically, so. Uh, it's we might it's paying, still but. financial prep. I, would, I wouldn't call that taking a break from prepping, I would just call that changing focus. That's true. I mean, like, yeah, because I mean, I'm increasing the resale value or at least preserving it. And uh, yeah, it's uh, less retreating. Work. We're advancing in a new direction. <laughs> That's right. So uh, yeah, but just, all the cool prepping gets get put on hold for now, though. Um, I I also did nothing um, terribly exciting. Um, got some camping in this weekend, which is great. Go out, get up, you know, just rely on what's in my car. Um, kind of made a uh, made a kit list of things that I want to. I want to change so that I can be even faster and more efficient at camping. I'm using air quotes there, although my camera's off, you can't see that. So uh, being more efficient at camping makes me more efficient at bugging out should the need arise. So um, that was uh, kind of had a dual purpose there. Uh, A couple of weeks ago, I had a rather humiliating experience trying to light a campfire in the backyard. So I've been really focusing my attention on the proper laying and lighting skills um and it, it's been a it's been a, a, a challenge to get back to you know single match no accelerant and uh just reminding myself of the basics it's it's easy to get fancy and deal with all kinds of major stuff but if you can't light a fire nothing else matters so that was my that's been my my thing for the last couple of weeks um i didn't think i was going to talk about it but since we've uh since since it's just the two of us uh, while i while i was camping this weekend the way that the campsite was laid out i ended up um quite by accident uh, driving over a uh, a tire rim that serves as a um as a fire pit well, I only got so far, and then it came to rest on the frame, and I was stuck. So that was kind of a fun little exercise. Um, you know, what do I have in my car that I can, you know, get my car boosted up with and get it out? And by the way, the ground is a little bit soft, so having to, you know, f- figure out the firewood situation to get my, you know, you you get enough firewood under the jack to get it up to keep it stable, and then get the rim out so that I could actually drive. And it was uh, it was it was an embarrassing experience. Um, the people that I was camping with, of course, took a lot of pictures rather than offer a lot of help. But um, it well, was well, as, uh, as good friends should do, right? As good friends should do, right? But it was uh, uh, I got really, really lucky that you know I didn't damage anything, and that it was just a matter of you know getting the car up high enough to get this get this tire rim out. But it was uh, uh, again just a reminder that stupid things happen. Oh, you know, that was literally a, a few seconds lack of focus. Lost this, lost sight of that tire rim in my uh, in a blind spot of my car, and all of a sudden my SUV was uh, completely stranded. If if I hadn't had you know the jack in my car, and if I hadn't had the the wherewithal to figure out that problem, it would have been at the very least a significantly more expensive problem to solve. So 
Uh, yeah, so it, it's just pay attention. Make sure that you you know test your kit. Make sure you know how it all works. That's uh, that's the the lesson I learned there. Isn't that the worst feeling ever when you got that jack and you're trying to like get the vehicle off and all the students just driving it into the mud? <laughs> mm-hmm. It, t- it took me like it took me about about fifteen seconds to figure out that that's what was happening and going, man. There's uh, there, you know, I'm gonna have to come up with another plan. And what's my what's my other plan? What are my other options? What do I have available? What are my tools? So, um, which again was really entertaining because I you know in in the end again because there was no major damage I could just sit back and breathe and go, okay. My worst case scenario is I need to call a tow truck. My best case scenario is I can figure this out on my own. Sure. And. As it was, I was able to figure it out, so that worked out well. I got a, a comment here from the infamous E uh, in Calgary, and it says southeast uh, southeast corner of town is where they're in. Uh, so it was pretty quiet for them. However, downtown in the northeast area took a beating. So uh, I think the northeast area, and not to pigeonhole people, but that is kind of the poorer area of town too. So that's not going to go over well either. It's. Uh, I mean, there's never a good place for it, but there yeah. are places that have better resources to resolve the issue. And um, without going off on a huge political rant, then yeah. um, there are other pla- there are places, parts of town that are going to get the attention faster than others. Well, not just that, but also like I mean, actually, it's kind of a funny story. I met my wife, and she was living in the northeast side. But anyways. Um, and yeah, it's it's basically like an extraordinarily high crime rate compared to the rest of the city. You know, take from that what you will, but it's just like uh, it's actually kind of funny. So, you know, uh, would it be you know uh, opportunistic crimes with everything down with the the hailstorm or whatever that, that could be a bigger problem. But anyway, um, yeah. Wait, that, people take advantage of disasters for op- for their own opportunities? It turns out, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That's, the, that's the second time today. That's the second time this episode that I have been surprised. Yeah, not as surprised as uh, it looks like Sean and Freya were surprised that the government actually like hid the truth about the Winnipeg thing. <laughs> that's I get it. Just absolutely mind blown that that's happened. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, other than that, I think that's pretty much it. Eh? Move on. I to think the that topic. is. That's that's lots of things. Yeah, let's go on to the main topic. You first. All right, so I decided to just make kind of a general purpose three-day bucket. So whether you're at home and there's a disaster, if you're going somewhere, toss it in the car, you can take this at the cottage, hunt camp, wherever. Five-gallon bucket doesn't take up a lot of space. It has a lot of uses. And so that was kind of where this where this came from. So start with the bucket itself, a nice heavy-duty uh, food-grade bucket. Uh, if you're going to do this and you're going to make a gam- – you're going to make a uh, – um, an emergency kit out of it get the gamma lid it's a screw on adapter it it's um it's just just makes good sense um i would wrap the outside of that with 100 feet of nice wide gorilla tape just so that you've got duct tape around because i think it was um i think it was nietzsche said that without duct tape life is meaningless i mean it might have been music but i'm pretty sure it was duct tape i think Either i think way. you were paraphrasing there but yeah no, I, just, a little bit, but. I i guess yeah, i never even thought of that that's a really good idea because like think about it, if you're tossing this bucket in the back of the truck and you know how easy buckets crack right yep. it means it's that extra layer of protection for the bucket it's like tape you can use it's like you know obviously hard to miss that bucket if you're like trying to grab one off the shelf or whatever there's like a million, a million good reasons for doing that it's actually really good I uh, I worked with a I used to work with a, a former um, Canadian military combat engineer, and everything that he had his water bottles, his knife handles, his backpack straps, everything was wrapped in duct tape. And he said, if you can't find a use for ten feet of duct tape somewhere, you're you're not like I've got. He's no sorry. What he said was, I've never been somewhere and wished I didn't have ten feet of duct tape, but I've been lots of places and wished I did. So, it, like, just wrapping it on the outside, it gets it out of the way. It doesn't take up any room inside. Doesn't take up any space. It doesn't add any weight. Um, so that's uh, so that was that was that's number one on the outside. So inside the bucket, number one, eight by twelve heavy duty tarp. That's big enough to make a shelter out of. It's big enough to co- to cover a hole in your roof. It's big enough to. Um, I used it on the weekend to make a windbreak around the fire pit so that we could. Uh, uh, we could keep our uh, keep our fire going without blo- without blowing everywhere. Um, get a heavy duty one. Um, I don't really care. I'm not particular on the color. However, I would say that um, the brighter the better. If you are going into a place where being visible is important, uh, so it, you know a, a blue or green tarp ha- would have more, or a brown or green tarp would have more of a tendency to blend in if you're in the woods. If blending in is important, then that's good. If blending, if you want to stand out, then uh, maybe go with a different color. 
Uh, keep, sorry to interrupt there. Uh, a quick question from Freya there. Where would you get a food grade bucket? Um, I mean, you can buy them on Amazon. You can get them at, uh, actually, uh, where I get most of my buckets is from the local firehouse subs. Um, uh, the local firehouse subs franchises, they sell their, their pickle buckets, which are just, it's a five gallon bucket. There's a, there's a red, um, and they are, um, they sell, they sell the buckets when they're done and, and all the money goes to helping firefighter charities, which, um, you know, is important in my life but it, it's a cheap bucket like it's two bucks it has a lid on it it doesn't have the gamma lid but it has a lid uh it has a handle they're in perfect condition used once food grade um and all that good stuff um ho uh, home depot and lowe's their buckets are food grade if you wanted to go with just a white one there uh you can you can buy them you can buy them really cheap on amazon too so if you're if you're doing an order anyways then Go go ahead and add it. the The Home Depot and Lowe's buckets, by the way, are are horribly expensive. Um, and check uh, check with your local. Uh, I mean, check with your local food distributors, right? They um, you know they've got they've got all kinds of stuff that comes in buckets that they, they don't get used. And your florists, uh, the local flower flower shops, all have dozens upon dozens of buckets that are just sitting around. And if you've got somebody in that industry that can make a couple disappear, then you won't be out any money at all. Yeah, so the, uh, the little symbol on the bottom, the recycling symbol, it's got the triangle with three arrows. Uh, usually you're looking for a code number two or a code five, I think. Uh, two for sure, anyway. Uh, that's the HDB level two, which is food grade, um, which the Home Depot buckets are. And uh, like there's another shop, if you want like a thicker walled bucket that won't break as easily because the Home Depot buckets are expensive and they, they shatter like you wouldn't believe. Um, yeah, go to the uh, there's a local store here on the island called Industrial Plastics and Paints. But any, like, like I said, any restaurant probably has food grade buckets that are like thick walled because they don't want their like, you know, cookie dough or whatever spilling all over the floor. So they get, tend to get quality buckets. And then, um, yeah, like that's uh, certainly, the, there's tons of places to get them. And like food grade is, is, it's kind of a catch all term, but basically you just want something that isn't going to poison your food, basically. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, not that I would ever plan, I mean, you're not going to plan to use plan to use this for food but it's better to have and not need than to need and not have and so if my last resort is i've got that bucket to scoop water out of the uh scoop water out of the the uh, the river and it's leaching chemicals into that water then if i have the choice of that or not leaching chemicals then i'll take the not leaching um so that's that's kind of where i was going with that um so the big heavy tarp, um, get the get a new one and leave it in the package so it's nice and compact. If you've ever tried to refold a tarp, you know that it's never as flat as this when you buy it first. Um, you also know that if it's if it's new, then it's in really good then it's in really good condition. Although if it's not, you have a hundred feet of duct tape to fix it with. Uh, I would put a couple of space blankets in there just so that you've got. Um, a way to reflect heat back on yourself. Uh, 500 feet of paracord. Um, they usually come in 100 foot um, packages. So I would get a few different colors just because I'm like that, but whatever floats your boat. Uh, paracord again, nice and light and um, nice and light and reasonably strong. Um, I wouldn't want to try and repel with it or anything, but it would uh, it'll it'll hold up your it'll hold up your your tarp and keep you keep you secure. Throw some tent pegs in there. Um, where I'm going with that is if you find yourself broken down at the side of the road, you have to walk somewhere. You need to make a shelter. You've got the ability with rope, tent pegs, and a tarp to keep yourself dry and out of the wind. So cool. after survival, my next highest priority is probably water. So I would throw a couple of water pouches, like collapsible water pouches. So not water bottles because they take up a lot of space. It, even when they're empty, you can pack them full of stuff, or you can just get the collapsible pouches, whichever whichever you like. Uh, throw a Sawyer water filter in there. You can get that at RapidSurvival.com, just for the record. And the uh, so Sawyer comes with one of the collapsible water pouches, right? There you go. So you've got so the the idea is you've got um with the, the idea of two a one is none, right? Um, but also. If you have to collect dirty water from somewhere and then clean it, you've got one clean bat, one clean container, and one dirty container, so that you have um, you're you're not contaminating your only you're not contaminating your only source. So that is um, that's kind of your your basics. Uh, I would throw a fixed blade knife in there just because I like knives. Um, People will make fun of Bear Grylls Gerber knives all all day long uh, within the within the outdoors community. I've had. I've had a few of them. I bought a bunch of them on sale one time when I was at Bass Pro. They had a, a little basket of them, and I bought a whole bunch. Um, 
I've done everything with those with those knives. They take an edge pretty well. They keep the edge not badly. I can baton with it. I can whittle with it. Um, duct tape and paracord wrapped around the handle because that's a great idea. They also have a little whistle built in. They have a sharpener. They have a, um, a sparker built into that. Like they're for thirty bucks, they're uh, they're an excellent investment in my opinion. Um, I had one in the the um, sheath came apart and. I called Gerber and they sent me a new one without any hesitation. Um, so people make fun of that, but it's a cheap, cheap, easy, reliable way to uh, to get a knife in there. Uh, I would rather go with a fixed blade than a um, than a folding blade, just because it'll it'll do more. A fixed blade will do just about everything the um, the folding blade will do, but the folding blade won't do everything the fixed blade will. Uh, half a roll of toilet paper and wet ones put in separate plastic baggies um we've talked about sanitation and why that's important toilet paper will also get you through fire lighting wet ones will keep you from stinking too badly slash getting fungus and fungal infections um and all kinds of other stuff i would throw some hand sanitizer and a little dish soap in into the bag into the box the bucket uh, a couple of mres some oatmeal pouches mostly some spices um if you've never had an mre before i encourage you to do this in a time when uh you don't have to rely on it they are not good like MREs are designed to be compact, long lasting. Um, they are like, they, they do not taste good. Um, a little, a little spice, a little, a little baggie of, of, you know, even taco seasoning makes the worst food a little bit more palatable. Um, if you've ever been out in the woods for any length of time and, and foraged for your own food, it is bland. It does not taste very good. Um, so if you, if that is part of your plan, if part of your capabilities, um, a little, you know, even a Tic Tac container full of, with with some with a with some taco seasoning will go a long way. Um, and then using the yeah, say whatever your preference is, taco seasoning, curry powder, salt, pepper, yeah. whatever. It's like it's a morale booster too, really. Absolutely, it's a, it's a morale booster as much as anything else. Um, so yeah, so some MREs just because it, because it's quick and easy. Um, I don't have to think about it. I don't have to. I don't have to forage. I don't have to you know, hope that I can find something along the way. Uh, I put oatmeal pouches in there because, you know, oatmeal is easy to make. It's easy to eat. doesn't take a lot of effort. Um, but it's, you know, lots of fiber and carbohydrates to keep you going. Um, I would also throw in there a little mess tin. So it's got a mug and a, and a, um, a pot to heat that stuff up with. Uh, I would put in there a Tyndall bundle with a Tinder bundle and some fire starters just so that you've got a way to make a fire um, again practice practice the skill it is perishable uh, i would put a couple of candles in there just some you know some long burning um i think i bought a pack i bought a box of them on amazon i think about 50 of them for about nine dollars and they're you know about eight inches long and they're just you know, white candles they're, they don't look like much but they burn for hours and hours and hours and one of the things i remember being told when i was you know i, I think i was in scouts um my scoutmaster said, anytime you light a match, light a candle, because the candle will burn for significantly longer. It doesn't blow out as easily, and it can it, it gives you more it gives you more option, and you'll you'll find yourself in better shape. So that was just one of those things that I've I've always taken with me. Um, seems to work. I would always put a compass and a whistle in there. Fox Forty is my kind of favorite whistle. Uh, you can't overblow it. They're pretty durable. Uh, even when part of it's broken, it'll still make a good noise. Um, compass go back to that we, we did an orienteering episode or a navigation episode it was one of the early ones i think probably yeah. never around for 20 somewhere but go back and learn make sure you know how to use it right uh, i put a couple of portable radios like the bay of fangs um along with a printed list of the frequencies to monitor so all the weather stations um in the in canada broadcast on specific frequencies um i found a list just by doing a quick Google search, um, as well as having a pre, as always having predetermined frequencies for communication, especially with other people that you are, um, um, that you are expected to talk with. So there's a, um, there are all kinds of networks of people out there. And if you have a, um, an assistance group you're trying to get to, or if you just have, uh, if you're just separated from your family, if everybody knows which, which station to be on, you're more likely to be able to find them and talk, talk it over. Um, seasonally appropriate hat and gloves. So it's, you know, this time of year, it's a ball cap to keep the sun off my eyes. In the winter, it's a, uh, it's a toque and a, a pair of nice warm gloves, always work gloves. I would also throw in there a two pound dead blow hammer and some kind of pry bar that also has a gas shutoff key carved into it. Normally I would say, um, 
grab a foobar from stanley and put that in there but um it doesn't fit in a bucket i tried um so rather than that those two those two items i mean sometimes it's a matter you know sometimes the difference between uh, an emergency and an inconvenience is the ability to solve a problem and with the right set of tools and the right mindset most problems can be solved um, if you are an electronics geek um, i was mostly hoping to kind of ping at eric for that but he's not here so when you listen to this eric uh power packs so that for all the electronics you can't live without and garbage bags so the kitchen size bags for your um for, for that will fit in your bucket and full-size bags because the rest of life needs garbage bags um, you can use that bucket so i would put all of that stuff in a bag in the bucket so that you can use the bucket separately and then also if you have need uh, you can turn that bucket into a porta potty um, yeah and if if you've got it lined then it's easy enough to deal with actually and a good point too is like the garbage bags can be turned into ponchos Worst case yep. scenario, uh, yep. you totally nailed me on the the gloves. Like I forgot about work gloves. There's there's no never a bad time for work gloves, right? Oh, uh, never. But the gas shutoff key, you mean for natural gas supply for the house? Yeah, absolutely. So just oh, okay. so just some so the pry bar the pry bar that I have it's a it's like a um, it's a flat bar and there's just a little square cutout in it and it's big enough to get on the get on the the shutoff valve of the. Um, of the gas meter and just crank it off. Uh, by the way, gas those those shutoff valves for everybody listening will go 360 degrees. Just always a quarter turn. Doesn't matter which way, but if you turn it a quarter turn, it's a ball valve. Um, it will uh, it will turn off. So that's um, just one of those one of those um, things. And if you've turned off the gas, don't turn it back on. Cool. So that's that's my list. That's uh, that's just a you know that would get you get you through a couple of days of solve stop the um, stop the leakage and figure out uh, figure out what you're doing with the rest of your life. Cool. Got a, a comment from Blake and Tia here. They actually use a 53 liter storage tub, which seems pretty big. Uh, okay. It's like 10 gallon. No, more than that. Uh, anyways, yeah, it's like 15 gallon almost. Anyways, uh, enough to feed a family five, uh, 20 liters of water, change of clothes, and a bunch of stuff in vacuum sealed bags. Always a good idea too. Um, yeah, it says they're uh, prone to large scale floods and fire in Australia. That's where they're calling from. And the storage camera is small enough to fit in the boot of a car, but uh, strong enough to use as a food prep table or a seat. That's a good point. Fantastic. Uh, I mean, this is you know there are there are of course a million ways to to accomplish this goal. Um, while I was out camping this weekend, I made the decision. So my kitchen box is currently uh, probably a um, twenty liter tote, and I decided to do the exact same thing and upgrade it to a nice heavy fifty liter tote. Uh, I'm going to. Home Depot tomorrow to pick one of those up so that it can do all of those things, especially using it as a food prep table. Because um, I was I was at the uh, I was out camping this weekend and decided that you know there, if I'm at a campsite, there's there's usually a table like a picnic table, but if I happen to be broken down on the side of the road, they probably won't have that luxury. So um, that is the that's a that's a really valid point. Uh, the other thing that you can use this bucket for, right? If you are by yourself, right, a five gallon bucket with a lid, you've made your shelter. Now you've got something to sit on. It's just another another advantage of that, uh, which is why I would also suggest putting all this stuff in a bag inside the bucket so that you can sit on the bucket and not lose access to all your stuff. Cool. Yeah, um, yeah so like I think you covered uh, a lot of it, but actually I just had a couple of differences there. Uh, same thing, I was actually searching around the, uh, the uh, uh, shed here looking for an extra bucket with an extra gamma lid, and I don't have any right now. So I was like, okay, how am I going to do this for show and tell? So actually, I came across something. Funny story on the island here. There's too many uh, tourists on the island at any given point, and they're always having stuff fall off their vehicles. So I've had uh, propane tanks and a bunch of other stuff come my way, including uh, a water cooler, that uh, insulated water cooler type of thing. So um, it was free, which is great. Uh, but it is insulated, which can be a good thing. It has an ice tight seal with the, the lid that comes with it, which is um, uh, right here. But it actually has right on there the symbol of HDPE2. So obviously, if it's going to be good for be food beverages, it's uh, it's good for re all sorts of food, right? Absolutely. So it it is another type of food uh, safe kind of bucket. Um, That's a great idea. And it's actually like, if it's sitting on your on your shelf, and you know, if somebody just sees that, they're not going to think it's full of survival gear, right? They're going to think, Absolutely. well, you got it in case of camping. So a little surreptitious, which is kind of nice. Uh, security but, by obscurity. Yeah, exactly. And you know what it's in it, but nobody else does. So mm -hmm. um, the other thing I was I'd changed off with, if you're really worried about moisture, like I would be here, uh, maybe think about throwing a dust can pack inside, like just even just a hand warmer, uh, O2 absorber, like, you know, mm -hmm. a silica gel. 
uh, aluminum tape if you really want, but that's going to give away the whole obscurity thing. Yep. Um, but yeah, just an honorable mention to all sorts of alternate bucket types. But uh, So that's what I kind of did with that, because same idea, you can use it to hold water uh, that's clean. Um, you can use it as a porta potty, I suppose, but not at the same time. Pro tip. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a one or the other. Definitely not yeah, both. Definitely not both. <laughs> and, it, and it's definitely once it's been a porta potty, it's not good for holding water. Yeah, no, so that's uh, there's a way to make that clean enough afterwards. I, I don't think you have to be bear gorillas to figure that one out. So uh, <laughs> anyway, but it's so funny we both got space blankets because of course weight, space, and everything else, and it's kind of like the go to. But and they're at the dollar store for a buck a piece. But really, I mean. I'd rather have a wool blanket, but we're in a five gallon bucket, right? So exactly right. And so the idea is the idea is something compact. You can grab it and go. You can take it anywhere with you. Um, it, it, you know, I can fit, and I've proven this with my, um, you know, with my car full of people. I can still fit six five gallon buckets in my car. So even if I had four people in my that were part of my plan, and all four of them, um, all four of us had our own five gallon bucket, we would have lots and lots of equipment together. And still be able to still be able to move without too much uh, without taking up all the space in the car. Well, uh, infamous mentions you can get the water coolers from work. Please don't steal them. <laughs> Make sure they're they're used to give away or something. Uh, we, we do not encourage theft or any kind of illegal activity at all. Yeah, but until you, such time you, as uh, you know, should it hit the fan without rule of law, that's just liberation versus stealing. Because if you need to survive. It's kind of liberation, it's, maybe. It's no longer, if, if there's no rule of law, it's no longer stealing. Well, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, but if, so, if you have an if you have access to those legally and morally, then that is a great way to do it. I I'm you know very much tip of the hat to Ian for figuring that one out. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, and uh, RJM or RYJM, sorry, points out the fact that Bear would probably uh, still use it after he shot it because he. <laughs> He had an episode where he drank his own urine or something, wasn't it? He did. He absolutely did. And it was that was the point where I kind of uh, um, I kind of tuned out with him because as as much as he's he's an excellent uh, uh, he's an excellent actor, and I'm going to use the again you can't see the air quotes because my camera's off. Um, he is a he is an actor and he is a heck of a personality. He is. Um, um, he definitely doesn't go as far as he could in terms of educating the public. So um, he's more about showing off than educating. And that was, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't a, uh, wasn't a, fa- wasn't a fan of that particular episode. Cause that was, um, he, he was good at, he was good. You know, he, he said, yeah, you can drink your own urine. It's not very good, but you can do it. And my well, argument is you, it's the opposite of hydrating because it's got so much sodium in it. So yeah. anyways, well, I mean, we, I mean, back Martin, to our water well, I mean, like Martin Harwell ate a nurse from Spence Bay after a plane crash, but that doesn't mean we're going to do a show on it. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah good uh, there's some Canadian lore for you. But yeah, uh, so it, let's go you know, circle back. I think actually it was episode number seven was the first water episode that we did. I remember that because that was the first episode I was on. Uh, but it, Go back to, number, to episode seven. You can you can use urine to distill or filter with that sort of water filter into drinkable water. Please don't drink your own urine. Yeah. Anyway. Well, anyway. Uh, so space blankets. Yeah. So uh, Hank's a paracord. So I, I just threw in two versus your five or whatever. But I just because I figured like two hundred feet. If you need more than that, you're probably just using bad technique. I don't know for for seventy two hours anyway. Because you're going to tie down your tarp. You're going to do a couple other things. But I don't know. Um, the only thing I was a little bit different than yours with the Sawyer is I had a, like a steel large canteen. I was going to show it off, but my daughter took it this evening to use for drinking herself. Uh, but it can be put in the in the fire or heated up over a stove, but it's just like a large enough canteen that's like the one and a half, two liter versions. Yep. Um, I had one bell fang in there as well, but I put like it with a car charging uh, attachment and the external antenna that actually like goes up on top of the roof and stuff. Uh, yep. Assuming that you might be in convoy, yeah, then of course you want to have two. But uh, one little notable exception there too is you can use that chirp software to pre-program uh, multiple frequencies into the phone ahead of time. It's it's much easier to do. But also, if you have a bunch of buddies with the same radio, you can hook them all up and just dump the same frequency kind of loading channel system onto each one, so that you can just say go to channel number five and everybody's on the same page. And right. uh, that makes so, sense. Yeah, so this Chirp software is like freeware. It's like you just get on the internet, download it, and um, it's. I just started toying with it myself. I haven't actually programmed a uh, radio with it because I'm obviously new to the the amateur radio thing. But um, yeah, once it gets going, it should be a pretty pretty good thing. So 
Awesome. No, that's a um, that's an excellent uh, excellent plan. Yeah, pre pre program. Um, the only reason I would say do the printed version is if my radio happens to get damaged and I find one along the way. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, for seventy two hours, the, the likelihood of that is pretty slim. But again, better to have and not need than to need and not have. And for the space and weight of a slight of a piece of paper, I'm okay with that. Yeah. So uh, and if we can go all autistic on it as well, but I mean, like I just had the same idea as your Bear Grylls. It's like that more a light might fire. So it's the Swedish stainless steel or carbon knife, your choice. Like, um, yep. um, but it's got the fire steel inside of it. Uh, it's a basically the same version as the companion uh, heavy duty OD green, but it's just got a yep. fire starter in the back. Um, yep. Just have some strike air anywhere matches, kind of in a sealed container as well. Same as you, whistle compass, bear banger, and pen flares, because obviously around here there's a lot of bears. And, um, you know, if you're in the trees and you want to make yourself noticed, you know, pen flares too. That's just to get, up, to get above the tree line. Um, you're all, that's also, that also makes a great fire starter. Yeah. It, yeah. I, same, same thing with gas too, I suppose, right? <laughs> Um, shit ton of uh, cliff bars or Datrex, whatever I can fill up the bucket with. So I think I got like, 12 in there before I was like, oh, I could probably shove another four or five. I just didn't have them with me. So, um, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, if you can get like, just, I don't, I don't want to have any food in this bucket that's going to require cooking or anything else. So basically it has to be pre-done. So whether it's the Datrex bars or the cliff bars or, or anything else that you prefer, just go ahead and shove a bunch of those in there with a variety of flavors. So you don't get dietary fatigue. Uh, mm -hmm. basically because I don't want to sit there and have to worry about cooking at the same time. I'm trying to, you know, survive on my own for 72 hours or, provide for others or whatever with minimal supplies, right? Sure. That makes good sense. Uh, TP and BZK wipes. So the little, you know, single use wipes uh, or yeah, alcohols, uh, Purell, if you can find it nowadays or anything else to some for a hand of sanitation and TP. Cause of course, as we know, sanitation or lack thereof does kill. Um, Just bitch. Yeah. You mentioned like, I'm still, I'm blown away by that. The good idea with the tape. That's pretty good. So I had duct tape, but I just had it squished together to kind of compact it a bit. But I was like, no, your, your idea is much better. When, um, I do, when I do all my duct tape, I do two, I do, I, I store it two ways when I'm carrying it with me. So it's either wrapped around, uh, wrapped around something, which is either my water bottles, or even if you just wrap it around a straw and then yeah. you can run a little piece of paracord through that and then you, and then it'll hang and roll or I wrap it around, um, uh, I wrap it around old uh, gift cards. Oh yeah! It, it doesn't take up any space. It doesn't stick to the gift card. Um, but you can you can get you know thirty or forty feet of duct tape into you know into, into something that is literally the size of a the size the size and thickness of two gift cards, and it's lots. Um, um, and so I just the only other thing I had to was a little different than yours was I had uh, so wool toques. So even if it's summertime, like especially in the places like Alberta where it's it is like I said arid climate at night, it still goes down to like. 8, 10 at night, right? So uh, there's never really a bad time of year to have a, like a, you know, the old surplus wool toques from the, you know, the surplus yep. store, Canadian Forces style. So you can get them in green or blue or whatever you want. They may be like five, 10 bucks a pop. And um, yeah, they're so, cause you know, if you, once you cover your head, you always feel warmer no matter what. And uh, disposable ponchos from the dollar store. So, yep. you know, they're only going to last a day or two, but that's a 72 hour kit, right? Uh, you only need it to last a day or two. That's right. Yep. Uh, change of underwear and socks, not just for hygiene, but also for morale purposes. And same thing, if you get your feet wet, that's the last thing you want. Yep. Uh, the tarp, like you said, uh, the Canadian Tire 9x12 tarps, which go on sale for like, what, four bucks? Four bucks, yep. And, and they're only going to... bucks, you, over, you overspent, yep. Yeah, and they're only going to last two or three days, I guarantee it. But that's all you need for this, right? That's all you need, yep. Um, and the last thing I forgot to mention, I just added the last second here, is the first aid kit. Because, I mean, ouch pouch mostly. Not, not like the full-on, you know, tourniquet special, but... I mean, things are going to happen, right? For. Yeah, that's right. That's what the duct tape's for. Duct, duct, tape, duct tape and TP. You've got a first aid kit. <laughs> Put down some TP, wrap it with duct tape, good to go. Uh, good <laughs> well, welcome to every construction site ever. Yeah, oh, it's, usually, it's usually electrical tape when that happens. They never mention that what happens when you actually pull, pull that duct tape off, but anyway. Um, by the way, if you do decide, if you do end up with some adhesive on your skin like that, um, baby oil is really good at dissolving that and not um, you don't lose your hair that way. <laughs> it is much more gentle on your skin. Comment of the episode here from RYJ there. Uh, you should keep a pocket of Mickey, uh, pocket Mickey of Everclear in there. It cleans your hands and your soul. I, that is that is solid advice. <laughs> That's awesome. Where's where's uh, Oh man, oh, that's that's great. We need uh, we need Colin on here for that. Yeah, I'm sure that would have been like the first four items on his list. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, a, well, his might have just been a 
a pile of ammo up to about the two inches below the lid line. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe and then a some couple booze. Of of, a couple of bladders of moonshine. Yeah. yeah, Good to go. But uh, I think calling it pretty much survived without anything for about three days. So <laughs> he's, he's one of those guys. He's a pretty crafty he, guy. So he, he sure is. He's, uh, yeah. So that is, uh, I mean, <sighs> Again, your your needs dictate, right? Where I am in Ontario, um, I have a very different climate from where Ian is on the on the west coast, and so um, it makes good sense that the two that the two is. I mean, it, it's you know twenty degrees out there today. It was five degrees last night. There was frost on the grass this morning when I got out of my tent. So um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't take much to 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 need that comfort and the comfort of the comfort and morale of having something that you like and being warm is is hard to beat um so that is uh you know it, it's it, your needs will vary right um to me a poncho is less important you know disposable poncho takes up space that a garbage bag could take and i fi- i find garbage bags to be more versatile so i would probably favor that it's a good Everybody's point got their- yep audience is on fire today so uh freya says uh, don't mistake duct tape for tp solid advice <laughs> I mean, I'm hoping for you it's not the voice of experience. Um, I can't say I haven't done that in my life, and I can't say that it hasn't been disastrous. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, that was, um, that, it's, that's solid advice. Do that. Um, however, they both burn, just for the record. Yep. So, uh, yeah, podcast challenge time. Podcast challenge. Do this for yourself. Assemble your own five-gallon bucket. Um, Ian says if a full bo- if a full bug-out bag is out of the question – sure or in addition to or um, I would say in addition to um, but yeah. also I mean th- bugging out is one thing but if you are if you simply need to have all st- a bunch of stuff in one place at home um, again we had a tornado touchdown you know a couple of miles from here um, fortunately there wasn't a lot of damage other than you know trees going down uh, but if you know if you had if you had to you know close up a part of your house because a tree fell tree came crashing through a wall then you have all that stuff in one spot so it's one thing you don't have to think about it's one one less thing to think about cool um so yeah uh yeah tell us what you did and if you uh have any like things that we glaringly missed or whatever just let us know uh we're always uh, open to suggestions we might ignore them but you know we're, we're open at least well, and it's 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 good debate no matter what, right? It's good it's That's good it. to discuss if there's something that that is especially and if if you are if you are out there in podcast land and building one and you've decided to do something a little bit different from what we have, tell us why, right? If you live in a different climate where something something else is a higher priority for you, then I'd love to hear about it. No, and I guarantee you missed a couple of good things there too. So, I was gonna I was gonna put a hammock in there. And I didn't. Oh, I, yeah. I actually had my hands on a on a, a hammock. Um, like a, a, it was pretty strong. Everything was ready to go. Just hook it up to a couple of trees and tighten the tighten the straps and off you go. And it was, uh, um, you know, probably about the size of a two liter pop bottle. And well, yeah, you can get really trees. like well the net version ones are you can get really small. But actually, I had one of those for a, uh, a college survival club course. So during my college program, I was uh, taking a, a weekend survival course up in the winter time in the mountains here in Kelowna. And uh, I brought a little hammock with me thinking I was super smart because I'd be off the ground. And, uh, you know, like I'd be, you know, like laughing it up with my friends who were freezing, shivering there on the pine needles and stuff. And uh, my behind was never so cold. Like it was, it was crazy because I had all the blankets on top and I thought I wrapped some enough around me, but not enough. And so, yeah, like top was okay, but the bottom I was like, oh, horrible. But if you, and if you'd had that tarp with you, then you probably, then you would have been able to block the wind and it probably would have been better. Yep, exactly. Yep. Uh, upcoming events. So uh, we do still have Tacom Canada on the books for September 11th to 13th, and we did put the ticket link in the show notes. However, that's still kind of up for debate because of the COVID thing. So um, if we hear back from Fred as uh, far as the yay or nay, we will continue to plug it. But uh, just uh, yeah, we're we're hoping with bated breath it still goes on because that'd be the only show that does go on this year. Who knows? And uh, I'm gonna. Nah, I'm not going to make a prediction on that because I don't want to. I don't want to jinx it. Well, actually, uh, you would know because uh, in Ontario, like I don't understand these phases, these one, two, three, four phases. So, uh, are they allowed like meetings of bigger than fifty people right now, or something? Um, it says gatherings of no more than ten. However, um, construction sites are exempt from that, and um, hospitals are exempt from that, and a whole bunch of other, there are a whole bunch, there are more exep- exceptions than there are 
rules to follow. So basically, um, don't have more than nine people on your own property. But if you are in any kind of public place, it seems to be all right. Um, I don't know how that's, uh, I, I don't know how it's being enforced. Uh, I know the, the Ministry of Labor um, around here is being really particular about um, hand washing and contact tracing. So they want, so right now, like malls are being reopened. I don't know how, how they call that okay with, because there's going to be more than 10 people that work there, right? So where what are they considering a gathering? Because you've got, um, you know, people in the stores and you've got, you know, is it across the entire mall? Is it is it a specific section of the mall? I, I don't I don't know, and I haven't received a clear I haven't received clear direction on that. Uh, I know the Ministry of Labor is trying to contact trace. So um, what they've asked the malls to do is have every person who works in all of the stores go in through one entrance, sign in and out, so that if there is um, if there is uh, a case that happens and that person can be traced back to the mall, then they can trace back who else they can, they can confirm at least who the workers were that would have come in contact with that person. So that's um, beyond that. It's just an absolute governmental bureaucracy with no clear answer. It sounds like a giant make work project, but <laughs> I mean, is yeah. Ontario just a giant make work project? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Anyway, um, shout out to time. I just got one for listener Steve, who's actually uh, not only uh, helped me bef- uh, behind the scenes, but also on the show here as well. Before I forget, he also mentions with the radios, you can email the programming file with that shirt program. From uh, You can email it to your buddies so they can actually do it from another province. Or That's cool. you, can, you can clone from radio to radio if you have the right cable. So, um, yeah, you can. Just, it's basically just like touching phones type of thing, you know, touching radios. You just... Uh, yeah, transfer the uh, the channel uh, setup and numbering system and everything else and all the CTCSS codes, like all the privacy codes and stuff. So um, it saves a lot of work, that's for sure. Well, and I'll shout out Ian. Um, he sent me a whole bunch of uh, study links and guides for the uh, for the shortwave radio, and I've been I've been studying voraciously on that for the last few days, and um, got the books open again tonight and spend a few more hours this next couple of weeks, and I'm trying to find a um, trying to find an evaluator here in uh, uh, here in the 509 area code. Again, if anybody's listening, you can help me out with that. Uh, find an evaluator that can administer the test. Um, nobody seems to be willing to do it around here right now, but um, I'm, uh, I'm feeling confident. I've done a couple of practice tests and I've done a lot of studying since and um, feeling confident that I could at least get the, uh, get the ticket. So, um, well, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if you're willing to give away your general area, but uh, if there's a, if there's an examiner in the Southern Ontario area, well, five one nine area code. I mean, that covers Windsor to uh, Windsor to Kitchener and a little bit, you know, a little bit around that area. So, um, if you're in that area, you know, within kind of a kind of a two hour drive of London, I'm you know willing to travel and willing to um, willing to bring uh, coffee and donuts, and I'll even bring the good donuts, not the stuff from Tim Hortons. Yeah. Well, and I, I was able to do mine online, so you never know. I mean, and you might be able yep. to do one online too. So, anyway, um, speaking of which, yeah, maybe even uh, get a hold of. Uh, I might give you my guy then too. Yeah, if it, if it can be done online, I'd love to do that that way. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So uh, move to the outro, I guess. I'm going to bring episode 72 of the Canadian Prepper podcast to an end. You can find the podcast on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. Please help us out and submit a review. It helps other people find us. We do record these shows live on Facebook and YouTube. If you want an early f- peek at the shows, uh, give us a uh, give us a like and a subscribe on our YouTube channel, Canadian Prepper Podcast, and click on the notifications tab. If you want to get me directly, you can find me on Instagram at ppswo or by email here, Alan with one L at prepperpodcast.ca. Right on. So you can uh, reach Ian directly by emailing me here at the Island Retreat at gmail.com. You can also find me on Canadian Patriot Podcast on iTunes and YouTube. We record uh, Monday evenings at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, you can find us discussing why government waste and society just triggers me in general. Uh, you can reach Eric if he ever chooses to answer emails or show up to shows at uh, feedback at preferpodcast.ca. Uh, thanks for joining us. Until no. next time. What's one that? show. <laughs> it's one. one show that he's missed. <laughs> okay, fine. That's, I gotta throw him under the bus at some point. Uh, thanks for joining us. Until next time, be prepared, stay safe. And keep learning.